Well, we're supposed to be sailing north, but as you can see, we haven't left the Whit Sundays yet because of the weather. The wonderful weather. We're in the middle of a thunderstorm. Well, we're sort of on the edge of it, actually. Stopped now. <laughs> now we've got everything up. And we're going to swelter. Yeah, it's going to be a greenhouse. Massive raindrops. This is the end of it. We're about to get it. Here it comes. This is where the last one is so fast moving. This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Wait, this is the story of a mid refit sailing adventure. Welcome along for the ride. It's early morning on Brilliant 2, and today we are leaving the Witch Sundays. Yay! Finally! We've got a load of wind. The thunderstorms have, well, there's still some on the forecast, but hopefully they stay north of where we're going. But we've been waiting for them to dissipate. Ah, oh, what a week of weather it's been. What a year of weather it's been. Anyway, what can we're you do? Crazy. You've got to roll with it. We can't complain about wind because we are going to have some. We're going to have plenty. Okay, two navigators today. Me and Mum. Right. Get yourself in your position, Mum. Ready to go? Yeah. Just motor up on the anchor, please, babe. The reason you motor forward when retrieving the anchor is to reduce the strain on the windlass or anchor winch. That rope Julian's hauling in is called a snubber and that too acts like a shock absorber, reducing the strain on the deck gear. We are leaving the Whit Sundays, only temporarily. We're attempting to go north in summer, which is either crazy or will work. We'll see, who knows. Our passage today is from Gloucester Island at the top of the Whit Sundays to Cape Upstart, which is about 50 odd miles, a little bit more than that. We're sailing fairly conservatively at the moment uh, because of the likelihood of the wind coming up a lot more. We've just got the jib out, no main, and the jib is partially furled, so we haven't let it out all the way. We are in a bit of a wind shadow from Gloucester Island at the moment, so it may be that we have to let some more out, but we're just hanging on to see what happens once we get out of that shadow. As usual, we've got a few pets on board. Josh's fish tank is all fired up, Got a bit of seaweed in it, some snails. We did have some Sally Lightfoot crabs, but they've been one. just one. We have one Sally Lightfoot. 
Anyway, the seaweed is a nice habitat for anything that we do get. When we do a, a proper passage, which is not just bopping around the Whitsunday Islands, we always navigate with uh, paper charts as well as our electronic navigation equipment. So here's the first chart which shows Gloucester Island where we spent last night and this one only gets us up to just past Bowen and then we go on to the next chart. Anyway we've done this route before so you can see pencil lines there already. We'll be making some more today. I'm just doing some old-fashioned navigation which I can't quite remember how to do. It's been a while. Anyway, I think I've done it. So that's where we are. Well, I'm cheating really, but I'm not taking any bearings from the land. I'm just taking the GPS position which has given us our latitude and longitude. And then I plotted it on the chart and that's where we are right now nine o'clock in the morning. Behind me is our electronic navigation equipment. So we've got a chart plotter here, which basically displays the same chart as we're using in a paper format. It shows us, the little boat on the screen and our direction. And we've got another plotter here which we're using as a depth sounder at the same time we can switch this to any variety of things so this could actually also display the chart or it can be radar number of functions we've got our autopilot on so you can see there it's set to a which means autopilot's working and that's steering for us and our wind instruments show that at the moment the wind is dead behind us 12 knots, apparent that is, uh, so we just have to add our, we haven't got speed indicator, 12 knots apparent plus the 6 knots speed we're doing, so we've got 18 knots of wind, but very variable at the moment. And the forecast today is actually strong wind warning, so it's easterly about 20 to 25 knots, increasing I think in the afternoon, maybe yeah. getting up to about 30. So it's going to be a rip-roaring ride. really lumpy sea at the moment and we've just looked at the chart to see what's going on with the current and you get a current across this bay from one side to the other and the current's running against the wind and the wind's 20, 20 plus and it's making for a very rolly passage but Pepe who gets seasick, <laughs> the only one of us that does, he keeps wanting to go down below <laughs> so he can feel really ill Oh. We're sailing conservatively because we believe the wind's going to come up and it certainly looks like it's getting a bit windier out there now. Well, it's going to be a rolly old day. We've got about 10 hours of this. It's just a very short swell. It's quite shallow here. Of course, as soon as I said it, we stopped rolling, but we've done a couple of good ones. Got a reef, Genoa, and uh, the wind's very nearly behind us. 25 knots of breeze we've got, we're even rolling that out of the sail.
Chris to drive. We've got to drive and head in to take up start. exactly the same spot as I was yesterday when we were about to leave so it must be morning departure except it was a bit earlier because you were surrounded in fruit oh yeah meanwhile Pepe has is wearing his collar of shame yeah because he's been scratching his teeth after having his breakfast yeah but his favorite place yesterday and we'll see if we can film it today is right down in this little corner here like that he likes sort of pushing his face or his bum up against the bare fiberglass of the hull so we'll see if he ends up in there today oh you did come up for a little bit didn't you but then it was all too much and you had to come back down below right well we're off cape upstart to cape bowling green is our leg today and the forecast is 20 to 30 southeast so those are oh, we love those conditions very far at all and here's our wind we're still deep down in the bay and we're definitely out of that shadow doing seven knots Already? it's blowing like 15 to 20. And how's the crew today good how are the vibes good this is our course today i've just zoomed in and i'm just checking this is the black line that's where we're going to be following i'm just check it like this zoomed in make sure there's nothing no that we've obstacles. missed any obstacles in the way if it was calm weather we could thread our way through these sandbanks but it's not it's going to be rough so we're going to go right around the outside all the way around here around the top of cape bowling green and we're going to come and anchor in in here we won't get fabulous um, protection Shelter. because the, it's a southeaster and it's a bit choppy in here but it other, is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. The only other option is go another three miles all the way in here. So now we're just going to have to keep an eye on the wind building and make the call on when to reef or furl in a little bit of the head sole because we've had to obviously unfurl it all the way this morning because there was nothing really coming out of that first bit of the anchorage. Um, but we don't want to carry the full head sole as it gets up to 25 to 30 knots. The time to reef, which is the term for shortening or reducing sail, came sooner than we thought, with the wind freshening and the waves starting to build. In fact, those sandbars on our chart were the cause of not just the steep seas we encountered, but had also laid claim to a ship or two. The most famous of these was the SS Yongala, a luxury passenger steamship 
which sank in these waters on March 23, 1911. Officially listed as missing a few days later, it would be 47 years before the wreck was discovered. Its intact superstructure, now a magnet for marine life, earning it an accolade as one of the top five wreck dives in the world. We're trucking along. We wouldn't call it a smooth ride. We've got the wind more on the beam today, which is good in one way. It's sort of... Well, <laughs> They're steep waves, that's for sure. We're not going into Bowling Green because the waves are just horrible here as we've um, jived and we think maybe it's the tide, we haven't checked the tide, but it's behaving like there's a lot of water rushing out from behind there. We're not going to get much shelter behind the sand spit so there just isn't any point in um, going side on as we try to get around it and we're going to carry on and we either get to Cape Cleveland or Magnetic Island, one or the other, but we're not stopping here. No, that wasn't very nice. And the fish tank, because all the water's gone out of Josh's fish tank and the bottom uh, glass plate was cracked. We think it moved, when we did a big roll, the fish tank moved and cracked into something. So we've got a, uh, a casualty. But it's okay, we're gonna try and jury rig it. We'll try and silicon it up until we can buy another. There's always a solution. Onwards.
How's the crew doing over there then? Very good, enjoying this um, surfing down the waves, flowing 30 knots, well almost, 25 to 30. Lovely, hitting 10 and a half knots sometimes. Oh, Pepe's surfaced even. Current conditions. Let's take Cleveland off to our port side and in the distance, Magnetic Island. We're carrying on past Cape Cleveland and we're going for Maggie because Cape Cleveland is apparently quite rolly and certainly going to be so in the winds we've had today. into Horseshoe Bay on the north coast of Magnetic Island just on dark at the end of what had unexpectedly been an 80 mile run. Just like that, the first section of our passage to far north Queensland was complete. Conditions on the following leg would prove continually challenging, but more on that in the next video. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.